called Trends. It's one of the central sections of the paper, Trends. There are pieces of real original reporting uh, about new topics uh, of... Uh, when we were in, 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 in Gothenburg this uh, last, last June, I talked with uh, Gloria Anderson. Gloria Anderson is a lady based in New York that is the, the, the chief or the president of the New York Times syndicate. That means the content that the New York Times sells to other newspapers to be... They pay, you pay, and you, you have the rights to reproduce some of their pieces. And they sell... This is the leading uh, syndicate service around the world. There are other newspapers that do the same, but New York Times very clearly is the, is the leading uh, company in this business. And she's, she's a very interesting lady because she, she sells to North Korea, uh, North Korea uh, South Koreans, uh, Japanese, uh, Indonesia, Italy, India, uh, Dubai, Madrid, uh, Buenos Aires, Africa. I mean, she sells the New York Times content everywhere. And I said, Gloria, what is the best-selling piece? What, what is the most uh, sold product of your syndicate? And you can say, oh, the Henry Kissinger columns, the Paul Krugman columns, the Thomas Friedman. I said, no, no. The most best-selling piece of the New York Times in the last two years is a weekly column that doesn't have author. I mean, it changes every week. Called Modern Love, Amor Moderno. And he talks about personal relations, wives and husbands, divorce, uh, children with parents, uh, I mean, girlfriends, uh, I mean, personal, amor moderno, modern love, the best selling everywhere in the world. Then you go to La Vanguardia, to this section of trends, and covers many issues related with uh, relationships. But this is new. Uh, this is an innovation, and it works. El País in Madrid did the same uh, as, when, as soon as they saw the success of La Vanguardia, and they started a daily section that is called Arte and Vida, Art and Life. It's very... Um, doesn't say anything. But it's about the same. It's talking about topics that never we have covered in newspapers. And they are the topics education, personal relations, um, design, new te personal technologies. You know which is the, the journalist in, in the world that is uh, the, the, has the biggest salary, uh, the, the, the most well-paid journalist in the world? It's an American journalist that works for the Wall Street Journal called Walt Mossberg. And I'm sure that some of you read uh, his columns. Walter Mossberg is a guy that covers the personal technologies industry iPhones, uh, Apple computers, Microsoft, I mean, technologies that we use. And you read him and you understand he's not an engineer, he's a journalist. He's paid, or he was paid uh, the last time that I, 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 he was released, the, the, his salary, he's paid one million dollars a year. He's the most well-paid journalist in, in the United States, perhaps in the world. What? Because he covers a very, very unique uh, field that normally in the past we never will cover. We will cover politics, we will cover local news, but personal technologies, personal technologies, trends, uh, personal relations, uh, this is the future. Also to, to open the mind of your new rooms that the life of our readers uh, has to be reflected in the, in the pages of newspapers. I uh, Violeta Bulls from Slovenia. I'm more interested in media as a driver for a modern society, one of the strong drivers of a new, whatever the new paradigm is going to come. So, um, and I was wondering, we just opened back home a discussion about uh, the impact of uh, public space on creativity of people. Uh, and of course, media and newspapers and TV, whatever, it's part of that public space. And I was wondering, I mean, uh, about the business model, how the media is really approaching and what, what is the background of these stories that you were showing us? Uh, do you, are you in a pushing mentality, which means uh, the experts decide and they push, 
or do you really monitor, uh, or do they, not you personally, but do they really monitor the behavior of uh, social behaviors and, and where the societies are going, or what is really needed for innovative society? Um, is there any link? Uh, 50 years ago, uh, you, you go to a newspaper and you ask what is the most read section of a newspaper and they will tell you it's the, the, the letters of the edit, uh, to the editor. I mean, the interaction of, of the audience. Today, with uh, the online media, I mean, it's amazing. You, you have a story immediately, it's an incredible reaction. And, and it, that means that I agree with you that uh, media for many years because it was not possible, it was not very easy to, to interact with it in, 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 on real time. Uh, could be arrogant, could be very one-sided. Okay, I'm, I'm the editor and I, I, I need, you need to, tell, to read what I think that is good for you. Uh, yes, this was the reality, but uh, unfortunately there was no, no possibility to do it the other way. Today, the, I don't think that uh, any editor in the world uh, thinks in this way. Uh, they are very aware about how important it is to interact and to give space to readers, to the audience, and and, and there are fantastic uh, experiences. I mean, it's, uh, all of you know. Yeah, th this is the reality today. Sorry. Hi, I have two questions. The first one, you you mentioned the new prototype of like thirty thirty, and we're talking about newspapers that are going to survive. Who are the what is the readership of these papers that are going to survive? Is it a global readership? And my second question is, does this um, need to reflect the life of the readers mean that the term of soft news is going to be redefined in a way? Uh, there will be, uh, as always, uh, media for everything. I mean, it will be specialized media for people that they love dogs and cats and for people that they love uh, foreign affairs or innovation or technology. That means, or general news. That means, um, what, what you need to know is what is your audience and, and, and don't give them what they are not interested because they will leave you. Uh, we, we are working right now in Paris with Liberation. Liberation, you know, is the, the famous radical newspaper uh, uh, born in after the students' revolution in Paris. Uh, Jean-Paul Sartre was the first editor, uh, has been a very radical communist, Trotskyist, uh, Maoist newspaper. And, of course, there were 200,000 people that they liked this newspaper like it was. Today is in crisis, in a big crisis. I mean, it sells 100,000 copies, and many of the of the readers or the the journalists they say that this is now an audience of uh, left caviar or, or, or gauche divine. Uh, these people are not as energetic as revolutionaries that they were 30 years ago. Many of them. Uh, this is one of the newspapers that has youngest uh, readership in the world. You compare the, 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 the age, the average age of Liberation and the average age of the readers of Le Figaro, it's amazing. It would be 60 years old against 25. But what the, the problem of, of Liberation is that when the, the radical reader of Liberation, young, very young, becomes Marius, gets a job, uh, have, have children, buys a house, and he's 35, 40 years old, he moves to Le Monde. I mean, he becomes more conservative. And of course, it's, it's natural. I mean, the, the Liberation is, is too much uh, for a person. That is, they, they are serving a very unique niche of reader. That there are not too many people like that. I mean, they, they cannot believe that they are going to have two million readers every day. It's impossible. If they change the formula, yes. Uh, and now we're working, working with them. Uh, we know that we, we will, I'm sure that we will produce a better product that they have, but they are not expecting a very radical change. I mean, this is an improvement of what they have. I mean, there are media, there are newspapers that uh, 